Let's look at an example with a diving bell. This diving bell is a heavy shell underwater filled with air at a high enough pressure to hold the water level down here at location 3. The surface of the water is up here at location 1 and the air up above it is at atmospheric pressure which because it's easier to work in gauge pressure we'll just say that the atmospheric pressure is zero gauge and that'll help us in all sorts of our, our uh, fluid mechanics work. So now we'd like to know what are the pressures at different locations in this field. We know here we're at atmospheric pressure, zero gauge at the surface of the water, and we know that the pressure is going to increase as we go down below the water to get to location two. So how would we get to the pressure at location two? Well, we'll start at location one, and at location one, the pressure is atmospheric pressure, which is zero gauge. Or because we know that one standard atmosphere is 101.325 kilopascals, and we figure we're probably in Kingston, so it's probably a little lower, we'll take 100 kilopascals absolute for our absolute pressure. And this is something that's going to vary from day to day. So as the barometric pressure changes, this number will change. So all the more reason to work in gauge pressure relative to the local atmosphere. So there'd be a pressure change from location 1 to 2. Delta P from location 1 to 2 is going to be rho, the density, times g, acceleration due to gravity, times the change in elevation from location 1 to location 2. And if we were very careful about our sign conventions, we could track which direction those changes were going in. But we know from our physical understanding that the pressure is going to be increasing as we go from location 1 to 2. So we won't worry too much about the signs. That's going to be 998 times 9.81 for G times whatever our value of D is. And if D is 40 meters, then delta P 1 to 2 is going to be plugging in some numbers 391615 a large number, 391,615, and the units on that are going to be, well, density in kilograms per meter cubed, acceleration in meters per second squared, and distance under the water in meters. Now, a kilogram meter per second squared, that's a newton. Meter over meters cubed would be 1 over meters squared, so that's newtons per square meter, or the unit we usually use for pressure, the pascal. So putting it in our more common engineering units, that'll be 391.6 kilopascals. So that's about four atmospheres higher pressure than atmospheric pressure. Pressure at two, it'll be equal to whatever the pressure was at 1 and we are going downwards in elevation so we know the pressure is increasing so plus the delta P from 1 to 2 or if we were writing that out with our symbols up here that'll be P1 plus rho G delta H from 1 to 2 or rho G times D if we take all of those as positive quantities. So by saying that D is simply a positive 40 meters and G is 9.81 and density is 998 kilograms per uh, meter cubed, then we get the magnitude of this quantity and without worrying about whether gravity is acting up or down or whether the change in elevation is up or down, we wind up with the magnitude and we're very careful to make sure that we get this sign here right to match up with the physical configuration. My experience indicates you're much less likely to make mistakes if you go and check that sign. Make all of these positive, check that sign and make sure that it works. And if I plug that in, I wind up with P2 equal to 391.6 kilopascals gauge or about 491.6 kilopascals absolute. 
Most of the time, we don't need to know the absolute pressure. So most of the time, we will work entirely in gauge pressure. But note that this is almost five atmospheres. So the air in this diving bell is at about five times the pressure as the air up here in the atmosphere. If it's at five times the pressure, it'll have a considerably higher density. So let's just keep that one in mind along the way. Now, if I want to know the pressure at three, well, it's connected to location two by the continuous path through the water, just like from location one to location two, we had a continuous path through the water. So once again, I can write delta P from two to three equal to rho times G times delta H from two to three. But these are at the same elevation locations two and three, so that's zero. So no pressure change between location two and location three. P2 is equal to P3. So finally, we can try to figure out what is the pressure at location four at the top of the diving bell. We can get the pressure change from three to four equal to rho g delta h three to four. And that's going to be, well, we'll need the density of air here because we're going through a medium of air rather than water. So if we assume that we have an ideal gas, for air, which is not a horrible approximation at pressures near atmospheric, then the density of air at the higher pressure will be approximately equal to whatever that higher pressure is divided by the atmospheric pressure times the density of air at atmospheric pressure. And that's going to be equal to 5.9 kilograms per cubic meter. So we'll have 5.9 much lower than the 998 that we had up here for the water, times 9.81 acceleration due to gravity, times h, which is 2.5 meters. And if I calculate that out, I get a value of 145, and the units are still pascals. So although we got a pressure difference of hundreds of kilopascals here, we're only getting a pressure difference of hundreds of pascals here. So differences by three orders of magnitude because the density of the air, even though it's gone up, is still much lower than the density of the water. So we can figure out what pressure at location four is. It'll be whatever the pressure at location three was, which is the same as what the pressure at location two was, which is the 491.6 kPa absolute or 391.6 kPa gauge and we're going to add delta P34. No, we're going to have to subtract it because we're going up in elevation. The pressure at location 4 is going to be a lower pressure than the pressure at location 3. So P3 minus, because we checked our physics so we get our signs right, delta P from 3 to 4 which will give us 491.5 kilopascals absolute or 391.5 kilopascals gauge. We'll work just about all the time in gauge pressure and only worry about absolute pressure when we need it over here to look at things like ideal gas law to figure out fluid properties. So what we find is that the pressure at 4 is almost exactly the same as the pressure at 2. It's only just a tiny bit lower because although we've got a change in elevation of 2.5 meters there, the fluid, the air, is at a much lower density than the water was here. So we get a thousand times smaller change than we would get for uh, the same change in elevation underwater. So if you go to the bottom of a swimming pool, say 2.5 meters down, significant increase in pressure. If you go down a set of stairs, two and a half meters down, very negligible increase in the air pressure. So in this diving bell example, we've seen how to start from a known datum pressure, work our way down to another pressure at this location, we know that we can go across on the same elevation to say that P3 is the same as P2. 
And finally, we can go from location three up through the air to location four to find out what the pressure is at location four. Now, if I wanted to get there a little faster, I could start and say, well, I really want to know what the pressure is at location four. Well, it'll be the pressure at location one plus the increase in pressure as we go down, rho of the water times g times the distance we went down minus rho of the air going from three up to four times g times h up from three to four. That's going down, that's going up in elevation. And then we can make all of these numbers here positive and still make sure that we get the right answer and we can pick out exactly what's going on from looking at the diagram. So don't try to carry the signs along with you in these changes in H. Just make sure that you get that sign right for each step along the way. And that's the basics of how to apply delta P equals rho GH for fluid statics problems. We'll do some more complicated examples later on.